If you were to ask me what the worst Pokemon you could possibly use in Pokemon Emerald would be, I think Nummel would be near the top of that list. Its stats for a pre-evolved Pokemon are fine. And its move pool isn't terrible, it gets some pretty decent moves. But its type is horrendous. Nummel is both fire and ground. And the champion of Emerald, as well as the 8th gym leader, are water types. In fact, Hoenn is covered in water. So if there's one Pokemon you would not want to use in a region full of water, it is one that is double weak to water. But remember how I said its stats are decent? While that is true, Nummel is also very slow. So we have a slow Pokemon that is double weak to water. I actually don't know if this is going to be possible, but it'll be fun to find out. So I battled every trainer I possibly could before I got to Geodude, and I'm still having to rely on Ember, which sucks. It's a four hit KO to knock out Geodude, and Geodude can kind of just go for Defense Curl or Rock Tomb, which has a 20% chance to miss. Thankfully, we get a ton of Defense Curls, but we get a bad range and it takes one more hit to knock it out. Now out comes a second Geodude, this is not the case in Ruby Sapphire, and we get a Rock Tomb miss, which is really good. We hit with Ember, this time Rock Tomb hits and it crits, I guess I deserve that. Roxanne uses a potion, and unfortunately, it then hits with Rock Throw and knocks me out. So, looks like I was pretty smart to level up as much as I could. In just four more levels, Numma will learn Magnitude, so if we have to level it up to 19, that will work. But I'm gonna try once again. I get a very clutch crit. Unfortunately, Rock Tomb lowers my speed, and after just one, Geodude outspeeds me. I keep going for Ember, that's really all I can do, and I just need to hope for Defense Curls, but having to rely on a lot of luck, it's not a great strategy. We're at half HP, but we've only knocked out Geodude number one. Our Orin Berry triggers, so we're above half for a second, but then Geodude hits with Rock Tomb. Once again, we're not getting good ranges, and Roxanne does have two potions, so it's just not going to work. I do keep battling Roxanne, and I have occasionally made it to Nosepass, and that's how, actually, burn. When you burn a Pokemon, and it's only a 10% chance with Ember, the opposing Pokemon's attack is halved. So having Geodude only deal 6 damage and lose 1 8th of its HP, it's pretty helpful, although we got pretty bad luck, so we don't have significantly- Oh, another burn. Well, that's going to help out immensely, because I was going to say we don't have significantly more HP than last time. So we just keep going for Ember, and burn is making a huge difference. Heck, it's doing like half, well, maybe a quarter of what Ember's doing. It's pretty good. And since Geodude has consistently gone for Defense Girl, we've actually made it to Nosepass at 29 HP. 31, now that we've leveled up to level 16. So it goes for Harden, I go for Ember, and it does nothing. After the second Harden, which is lucky, I go for Growl. So that's going to help. It goes for Block. I don't get a burn. Another Harden still hasn't attacked me. No burn. Another Harden. Another Ember. Still no burn. Tackle is only doing four, and there's the burn. I think this match is over. This time, burn is actually dealing more damage than Ember. And as long as it doesn't get critical hits, you know what, we should still win. Yeah, it's only doing two damage. With seven HP to spare, Nummel won, although it got three consecutive burns. Now, of course, we could have leveled up to level 19. We could have just battled Roxanne a few times. Would have taken another maybe 15 minutes or so, but that strategy would have worked easily. But I'm glad we didn't have to. Trying to win these battles at the lowest possible level is definitely pretty fun. I mean, I understand why Nuzlockers like having level caps. It is more satisfying knowing that you're roughly at the same power level. Now, although you can skip him, I have chosen to battle Brawly next. He leads with Machop. I go for Magnitude, and I get Magnitude 7. We're going to have to talk about how Magnitude works, but after this battle. Unfortunately, Ember doesn't knock out Machop, and Brawly already has Super Potions. So, okay. I get knocked out, and while I battle Brawly again, let's talk about how Magnitude works. So Magnitude ranges in power from 10 at Magnitude 4 
to 150 at magnitude 10, the most common being magnitude 7, which is 70 base power. Funny enough though, its average base power is actually 71, just because of how the math works out. This is important to know because unless we go to the game corner, which I can, the next good move we learn is Earthquake at level 35. So we're really going to have to rely on Magnitude, which theoretically can be more powerful. Now in this battle, I've gone to Makuhita, but I only get Magnitude 7. However, if we got a Magnitude 9, we would have won. So it just kind of sucks that we're relying on basically a roll of the dice. Magnitude 8, we can see almost one shots Machop. Magnitude 7, we know, gets it to about half HP. Of course, Karate Chop can crit us. It seems that in this battle, it's just a matter of magnitude cooperating with us. We get a magnitude 6, not looking good, but Machop goes for bulk up. Then we get a magnitude 7, Machop Karate Chops, not looking good at all. Then I get a magnitude 9, followed by a magnitude 7, which does knock out Machop. Now, I love this Metatite because it only goes for Focus Punch, a base 150 power move, but if you attack it while it's charging up, it doesn't do anything. So it basically can't attack me. And we knock it out with Ember. So now we're at level 20. And Makuhita, we just need a strong magnitude. Magnitude 6 crit. It goes for Vital Throw, which always goes last. Thankfully, Makuhita gets Citrus Berry. And so it's not in range to heal. And we... Oh, come on! No! Ooh, we survive. But there's the Super Potion. And Magnitude 6. Wait, we got one more attack. You know what? We didn't even get crazy luck. I don't think we got a single magnitude 9 or 8. Wait, that's not true. We got one versus Machop after bulk up. It just didn't feel like a magnitude 9. But yeah, overall, this went pretty well. Unfortunately, the magnitude lottery is another reason that Nummel is going to really suck to use. And the other thing you're going to notice is as we get later and later with more evolved Pokemon, Nummel isn't going to really be able to outspeed anything unless we're hilariously overleveled. Thankfully, that shouldn't matter for the next gym leader, Watson, but it probably will matter against the next major trainer, May 2, aka one of the most difficult fights in the entire Pokemon franchise, at least for challenge runs. Now, I've leveled up as much as I can without battling wild Pokemon, so I'm at level 25. Lombre leads, it goes for Absorb, and we get a Clutch Burn. May then withdraws Lombre and goes into Marsh Stomp, which outspeeds, goes for thankfully Water Gun, and Magnitude 8, after an Ember, nearly knocks it out. So this actually won't be so bad, and if May always switches from Lombre, I have an idea. So I go for Rock Tomb, and now that Lombre is taking damage, I thought it would swap. I get the magnitude 10, which was my plan. Unfortunately, we don't get the swap. If I get another one, we'll knock out Marsh Stomp, but we don't. But you can see the plan here. Have Marsh Stomp switch in on a magnitude or hope for a very high power magnitude. Eventually, this is going to work. All right, let's try again. Lombre goes for Growl. We go for Ember. It gets the burn. And oh, I thought it would swap out. It goes for Nature Power. Magnitude 7. It's hurt by burn. Nature Power. I try magnitude again. Not working, but we knock out Lombre. Marsh Jump goes for Water Gun, Magnitude 4. All right, give me a few more tries. All right, so let's try this again, again. It goes for Absorb, I go for Ember. It goes for Nature Power Swift, I go for Ember. It goes for Growl. All right, this time it didn't swap out again. Now we just need a high power Magnitude. We have 5 HP left. We get Ma- Oh, well, critical hit worked. That leaves May with just one last Pokemon, Slugma, which is even slower than Nummel. If you're wondering why we're we using Nummel over Slugma, Slugma isn't Rock type yet, so it's not quite as bad versus Wallace or Wan than Nummel is. But so far, Nummel is, I mean, it's still a little overleveled, but it did tank those water guns way better than I thought it would. The fact it wasn't a one hit KO was really, really clutch. So I'm very proud of Nummel so far. This run's actually going a lot better than I thought. And I think that will continue against Watson since we have such a great both offensive and defensive matchup versus his team. Okay, so I think this is going to go well, but if we get bad rolls with Magnitude, it'll go really badly. Voltorb goes for rollout. We get a Magnitude 9. That's really good. 
Next comes out Electrike. It goes for Howl. We get a magnitude 4. That's bad. It then goes for Leer. We get a magnitude 6. Two shot is fine. Now is likely we're going to get the Magneton, which should be a 1 KO. I don't need takedown. There is Magneton, and it uses Supersonic. Uh-oh. We do hit with a Magnitude 9, and frankly, we're going to need that kind of luck against Manectric. It goes for Howl, meaning Quick Attack will do more damage, and we snap out of Confusion, hit with Magnitude 7, and... Okay. That did way more than I thought it would. I thought we'd need a Magnitude 8 or 9 to knock it out. Turns out we didn't. So, this went even better than I thought it would. We didn't even get above average luck, really. And we still destroyed Watson. That's not bad. And the next gym leader is Flannery, who we also have a good offensive matchup versus. However, defensively, it's a little more suspect. Before we battle Flannery, though, Maxi is pretty tough in a lot of these runs. So we should talk about his battle first. But as this battle begins, I'm going to warn you... Numble's leveled up a little bit since the last time you saw it. And there's just a lot of trainers, and Numel isn't in the slow level up group like Magikarp, and it's at level 38. I actually meant to equip White Herb, and then forgot, which sucks because we get hit by Bite, then Sand Attack, then another Sand Attack, and then another Sand Attack, and then another Sand Attack. Finally, we hit, but we don't one-shot. So, yeah, that was really bad. Ideally, we don't have to use White Herb here because then we can save it for Sydney, but it's possible we'll have to use it. So, Intimidate, we go for Ember, try to get some damage on it, but once again, we get Sand Attack, then Bite, which flinches. A hit by another Bite, Ember's actually doing half, which is pretty good. Another Bite, Ember misses. Another Bite, we knock out Mighty Enna. We're only at 40 HP. Camerupt comes out, we miss with Earthquake, but it goes for Focus Energy. And our second Earthquake actually hits. There's only one Pokemon left. It is a Zubat. We have Rollout, which almost one-shots, but not quite. Maxi uses Super Potion, but thankfully, even with the Accuracy Drop, Rollout hits for a second time. And so, it only took us two attempts, and we didn't need to use White Herb at all. But we are really overleveled, so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, but I can still be happy. Now, after battling Flannery, I should be happier. Our Nummel is way overleveled. One Earthquake knocks out her Nummel. Two Earthquakes knocks out Slugma. The next Pokemon to come out is Camerup, which we outspeed and knock out with Earthquake. Now, Torkoal is pretty bulky, but we knock it out with a critical hit Earthquake. Not sure if the critical hit mattered, but we're at level 40. And that may still not be enough for Norman. Norman is pretty tough. Thankfully, only one slacking in this one, but it's still a very, very tough Pokemon. It can deal a ton of damage, and his other Pokemon aren't too bad either. So, I am a little nervous, and unlike last time, there aren't almost any trainers to battle between beating Flannery and challenging Norman. Just the trainers in his gym. So, I actually forgot to heal by accident. He leads with Spinda. We do outspeed in one shot with Earthquake. Next comes out Vigoroth. It outspeeds, but Facade doesn't do a lot to us. So we're at 41 health for Lanoon. It goes for Slash. We're at 11 health, but we're still one-shotting. But Slacking goes for Faint Attack. That was a mistake. I did mean to heal. But it was good information to know that we do a ton of damage to Norman's Pokemon. So hopefully this doesn't take too many tries. But considering how much damage his Pokemon did, it might. All right, so take two, we've healed. Earthquake knocks out Spinda, that's pretty good. Vigoroth outspeeds and goes for Slash, and Earthquake doesn't knock it out. Okay, that's interesting. Norman uses Hyper Potion, and we don't knock it out the second time, so it looks like an unfavorable range. That's not very good. Now, Lanoon outspeeds, we're at 21 HP again, and Slacking goes for Facade. So... This is not going to be easy. Well, there were a couple trainers I left in Norman's gym. So, I'm at level 41 now. I knock out Spinda in one hit. Vigoroth still outspeeds, but we should one-shot. That's good. And now, Lanoon is also going to outspeed. Hopefully, he went for Belly Drum, but it goes for Slash. 53 HP. Is that enough? No. No. Slacking knocks me out with 53 HP. So... What do we do? Alright, well, so, 
Let's use Earthquake against Spinda. That's good. And now against Vigoroth, it goes for Facade. We knock it out with Earthquake. That's good. Hopefully we get Belly Drum. Do we? We do. There we go. So we're at 84 HP this time. And now it goes for Yawn. I get Drowsy. I go for Flame. Oh my god. So that worked out pretty nicely. I wanted to get a burn on it, but we got Yawn and a crit. That was pretty lucky, and I'm actually quite happy, because we probably would have had to have gone up three or four more levels, which would have taken us a really long time, because just so little of the game is opened up to us before we get Surf, which we get by defeating Norman. Now that we have Surf, a very large chunk of the game is opened up to us, and we probably don't have to talk about any of the battles until May 3, which is actually the final mandatory battle. Very few rival battles, which I guess they made up for in Gens 4, 5, 8, where there's like a billion of them. Now, I actually didn't battle that many other trainers. I'm only at level 42. It goes for Fake Out, so I need to wait a turn to go for Flamethrower, which does a ton of damage. And now, I could try to go for Rollout and see if I could use Rollout strats. Of course, it's probably a bad idea since Marsh Stomp resists Yak. Yeah. And it knocked me out with Mud Shot. You know, maybe this is going to be a little tougher than I thought. All right, let's try that again. So it's going to go for Fake Out. We flinch. Flamethrower doesn't knock it out. Nature Power turns into Swift. That's not a big deal. We knock it out. We actually outspeed Marsh Stomp and Earthquake one shot. So yeah, that was about as easy as I thought it would be. And then Slugma, we outspeed and knock out with Earthquake. And that is the final <laughs> mandatory battle versus May. Very, very good. But, as much as that was an easy victory versus May, Winona, the flying type gym leader, might be difficult. We do have Flamethrower, but she does have a Pelipper, and our best move, Earthquake, doesn't affect her Pokemon. This might be a deceptively bad matchup for Nummel. All right, so she leads with Swablu. We go for Rollout, and it doesn't one-shot. Aerial Ace is good. So we have two turn rollout. Against Pelipper, it goes for Protect. That's a problem. It misses with Supersonic, but it is outspeeding me. It misses again with Supersonic. And once again, a second turn rollout knocks it out. Skarmory, unfortunately, comes out and goes for Sand Attack. Third turn doesn't knock it out. It is doing quite a bit of damage, and we missed with Flamethrower. So I think rollout is just not the right strat. So I'm going to try again doing something a little differently. This time, I'm going to go for Flamethrower. It doesn't one-shot Swablu, but it goes for Safeguard. Winona then heals. We go for Flamethrower again, so it's not a range. She withdraws into Altaria. Now, this knows Earthquake. It does outspeed, and Rollout does next to nothing, and a second Earthquake knocks me out. So, remember how I said I thought this would be tough? Yeah, you can see what I was talking about. I'm not sure what we're going to do versus Altaria. I try Rollout Strats again. Since if we had a 5th turn rollout versus Altaria, it would be good. But Pelipper can go for Water Gun. So we're at 30 HP headed to Skarmory. Aerial Ace almost knocks me out. And a 4th turn rollout doesn't knock it out. So we have knocked out 3 Pokemon. But at 7 HP, Altaria just has to go for Aerial Ace. And we're knocked out. It is annoying to suffer a setback. But this is one of the best places to suffer it. Because there are a bunch of trainers I missed on Route 119. And then there's a ton more on Routes 120, 121, a bunch of trainers in Mount Pyre and Team Aqua on 122, and then there's even trainers on 123. So if I really want to, I can gain a ton of levels and come back and probably destroy Winona. Now, I didn't want to overlevel too much, so I come back at level 50. Pretty round level. Now, unfortunately, Rollout is doing more damage, but Swablu uses Parish Song. So we would have to reset every time. There is no way we can survive a Parish Song because we faint in three turns and it takes longer than three turns to knock out five Pokemon. So let's battle again. All right, this time Slibliu doesn't use Parish Song and we knock it out in two rollouts, but the same thing happens with Pelipper where it goes for Protect and then it goes for Water Gun. So this is just really not working. I know rollout can be great, but it just isn't happening here. We need to one-shot Swablu, it seems, which we're not doing. 
and then another Parish song. This is just looking really, really bad. I'm going to try one more time, but I don't know what to do after that. So I'm going to go for rollout. No one shot. Mirror move. That works. Okay. So we knock out Swablu. Please no protect. Okay. We knock out Pelipper. So this is a fourth turn. Will it knock out Skarmory? It does. Now, oh goodness. Earthquake doesn't do a lot. We knock it out. And the final Pokemon is actually Tropius. And we have a copious amount of flamethrower to use. That worked out real well. All right. Six gym badges down. Not bad at all. And I don't think there's really much else to talk about before Moss Deep City. I mean, there is another battle versus Maxi, but with Flamethrower, it should be a heck of a lot easier. So Mighty Anna goes for Swagger, but we have Personberry. I anticipate that, and we knock it out. Now we have a sharply risen attack, so we can use Earthquake to easily one-shot, and I can just go for Flamethrower. It's gonna be a two-shot, while Super Potion's gonna be a three-shot, but unless it goes for something like Confuse Ray, another Super Potion, all right, a four shot, and there is Confuse Ray. All right, we don't hit ourselves in confusion. That could have been really bad, but we are pretty high leveled. I mean, we're only one level higher than you last saw, but that's much higher than Maxi's Pokemon. We're in the medium fast group, so this is a group that starts off kind of slowish, but by this part of the game is really, really fast. And that's definitely coming into play here and will help us if we need to level up an absurd amount for any of the final major battles. But let's skip ahead to Tate and Liza. A double battle. All their Pokemon are immune to Earthquake. Their strongest resist Flamethrower, and it's going to be a two versus one. This is going to be really tough. All right, so I don't think this is going to go well. I have an Oddish that I just used for cut, so that's going to be my second Pokemon. I'm going to go for Flamethrower against Zatu, and then I'll just go for Sweet Scent. Doesn't matter. Oddish gets knocked out instantly, and Claydol's Earthquake. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's not close. Okay. I mean, we can battle them again, but that's not close. Okay, so what are the issues here? Well, consider the fact we're weak to Earthquake. The Claydol's outspeeding us. We don't one-shot any of Tate or Liza's Pokemon. There are a ton of trainers around that I haven't battled yet. And I think it's high time to battle them. So I battled a lot of them. And now we're going to come back all the way at level 64. I go for Overheat, seeing if I can one-shot Claydol. I can't. That really sucks. I have White Herb. I've saved it. But we're going to need to one-shot Claydol at the very least. Because Claydol's Earthquake does a ton of damage. Getting rid of it before it can damage us, that's integral to us winning. So we level up again. I'm at level 65. Zatu is going to knock out Oddish. That's fine. Overheat one-shots Claydol. And with that White Herb we saved, we're going to restore our stats. Now, uh-oh, I get confused, and Lunatone goes for Calm Mind. I'm going to go for Rollout, just because it's a good move to use against all the remaining Pokemon. The problem is, they just use Psychic, and I faint. So, being hit by Confuse Ray, that was bad, but 2-on-1 just makes this so difficult. Now, I actually forget to teach Overheat. Which, as I've talked about in other runs, I delay teaching moves till the last second. And you can see, Overheat does obviously matter. Flamethrower does not knock out Claydol. We just gotta keep battling them. We might have to level up even more. We're still at level 65. Psychic knocks out Oddish as always. Overheat knocks out Claydol. Crit didn't matter. Stats restored by White Herb. Lunatone comes out. We're gonna try to Overheat against Zatu. We don't knock it out due to Calm Mind. And there is the light screen. Tate and Liza heal Zatu. Lunatone puts Numble to sleep. So that ends my rollout and I'm asleep. Sunny Day is up, which isn't very good. Psychic doesn't do a ton of damage, but yeah, I'm just going to have to reset. There is a ton of luck involved here. It's possible we could win, but 
with a two on one, Tain Liza getting two turns for one, it's just too hard. There are too many things it could do. Okay, so we knocked out Claydol for like the 50th time. That's fine. Lunatone comes out once again. This time I'm going to go for rollout right away, but I miss. And I'm just getting so frustrated because it just feels like I don't even... It's not even about winning at this point. I don't even know what my strategy should be going forward. And we're getting such atrocious luck. I don't even have information, which is what I want. All I know... Oh. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. So it turns out Claydol isn't a 1 to KO guaranteed. Amazing. That I learned. So hopefully we get it this time. We don't again... Okay, I think we need to level up. I mean, I can keep battling them again and again and again and hope for some really lucky stuff to happen, which to be fair is what we've done in the past, but I don't even know if it's possible without some absurd luck. Well, let's battle them one last time and then I'm gonna level up if we fail. Now, I think you know how this battle's gonna start. Zatu's gonna use Psychic against Oddish. We're gonna use Overheat, which can miss by the way. 10% chance it misses. And we knock out the clay doll. So now I'm going to go for rollout. Zatu goes for calm mind. We one shot with a crit. That's really helpful. Next comes out soul rock. Lunatone goes for calm mind. We hit solar rock with rollout. Rollout is hitting randomly, by the way. Sunny day. We hit again against soul rock. Psychic deals half damage to me, but we hit and we win. So, here are all the lucky things we needed to have happen. The moves they picked. The fact we hit Soul Rock twice. Yeah, there's a lot of dumb stuff that happened. But, it's a two-on-one battle. So, forgive me for not being too upset about winning like that. I mean, can you imagine doing an entire run of two versus one? That would be abysmal. I should do that. Anyway, we do have another battle that kind of feels like a two-on-one. We do get Steven to help us out, but he's not very good at battling. You'll see what I mean. So, I want to use Earthquake, but Steven sends out Matang, which is weak to Earthquake. Thankfully, due to Intimidate, Matang actually survives. So does Mayena, but Camerupt faints. And now Matang could attack anything it wants, but it actually attacks Mayena, making it kind of useful. So maybe I need to take back my insult of Steven. Now, Golbat does knock out Matang, and unfortunately, due to Scary Face, Camerupt outspeeds and goes for Earthquake, but we have Skarmory out, so we actually can use Earthquake, knock out Camerupt, and not knock out Skarmory, which is pretty good. Nummel levels up, and we have Crobat and Golbat, so I'm gonna go for Flamethrower. Skarmory goes for Protect. They both attack Skarmory inexplicably, but Flamethrower does not knock out Crobat. Thankfully, Skarmory to the rescue knocks it out with Aerial Ace, but unfortunately, it's too little, too late, and Numble is knocked out. But, in case you're worried this was going to be a really tricky battle, don't. We got really unlucky with the scary phase. So, in this battle, we still don't have Whiter, but that's fine. Earthquake still won't knock out Mightyena, but it does knock out Matang, which is actually kind of good, because now we get Agron out, the second Intimidate hits, and we also get hit by Scary Face, which is bad, but then we get hit by Swagger, which is great, because now Earthquake will knock out everything, which is fine, because Skarmory is probably the best Pokemon we can use. So now we have our normal attack, we're just confused, and while we won't hit Golbat, we can knock out Camera up with Earthquake, we actually snap out of confusion. So, we only have three Pokemon remaining, we have Crobat, so we're going to go for Rollout. Skarmory goes for Protect. Wing Attack isn't doing very much. Like I said, Rollout just hits randomly in double battles, which is really, really annoying. But it hits Crobat twice. So that's really good. That turns the battle into a 2-on-1, which we win. Not a big deal. I hate this battle for the record, but not the worst. Now, there's only two major battles, really only one, before Victory Road. A battle against Archie I'm not too worried about. And then the battle against 8th Gym Leader Guy. Every time I say his name, people get mad at me. Um, I'm just going to say Discount Wallace. So we have to beat Discount Wallace. 
And then there's Wally and then the Elite Four. So there's not much in terms of major battles left. But of course, eighth gym leader guy is probably going to be really, really tough. So let's go battle Archie. All right. So let's battle Archie. Mighty Anna, Intimidate. We know that. But we can use Flamethrower and at level 66, we one shot. Next comes out Crobat. It's going to outspeed us. We go for Rollout. Thankfully, Air Cutter missed. It went for Confuse Ray. But we, oh, we don't knock it out with rollout. Still using super potions. Once again, we hit. So that's pretty good. And now Sharpedo uses slash. We hit ourselves in confusion. It hits with slash again. But even with intimidate, Earthquake's going to knock out Sharpedo. And yeah, that was about as easy as I thought. Sharpedo doesn't have a water attack. So we were good there. But 8th gym leader guy does have water attacks. This is going to go so badly. Alrighty, so Juan leads with Love Disc. It outspeeds, goes for Water Pulse, but Love Disc is so weak, it doesn't do all that much, and we knock it out. Next comes out Celio. We go for Earthquake, we knock it out. Okay. Whiskash is next. We go for Earthquake, knock it out. Okay. Crawdont is next. We go for Earthquake. Wait a minute. The final Pokemon, though, is Kingdra. It outspeeds, goes for Water Pulse, and knocks us out. Okay. That was at least somewhat difficult but i have an idea so i still have the quick claw and if we equip that there is a 20 percent chance we win unless the soft sand was a difference maker in which case that's not very good let's find out sweet kiss well that sucks so we hit ourselves in confusion i'm just gonna reset i don't want to bother with that all right so Let's try this again. Now, I don't know if you noticed something, but there's a reason I didn't make a cut here. So, Water Pulse, Earthquake, same thing as before. Earthquake's gonna knock out Celio. Earthquake's gonna knock out the Whiskash. Earthquake's gonna knock out the Crawdont. Crit didn't matter. And Water Pulse is gonna knock me out. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I forgot to save with the Quick Law, and it took me an embarrassingly long time to figure that out. But there's another question. Do we one-shot if Quick Claw activates? Love Disc uses Sweet Kiss, which is actually good, because we have more HP, as long as we don't hit ourselves in Confusion. We one-shot Celio. Whiskash is next. We snap out of Confusion and knock it out. We already know we're going to knock out Crawdont. So here's the moment of truth. First time we have full health for Kingdra. It goes for double team. Interesting, but we don't knock it out, which is bad. Hyper Potion. We don't miss. Another Hyper Potion. An oh, we do miss. There we go. Another Double Team, which is really strange. And a crit! What? <laughs> okay. Gen 1 AI moment. What in the world was that? No, seriously, what was that? What happened there? What? Okay, so we won. Wallace probably won't be so terrible. But before we battle Wallace, we still have Wally and the Elite Four to get through, and that could be difficult. So I always mix it up, but in Ruby and Sapphire, you battle Wally at the end. In Emerald, you battle Wally at the beginning. He leads with an Altaria. I'm going to go for Flamethrower. It's resisted, so it's going to be a 3 KO. It goes for Dragon Dance after using Aerial Ace, and then it goes for Safeguard. So that's fine. I'm not hoping for a status anyway. Delcaddy, I outspeed and go for Earthquake. Obviously, I'm only outspeeding because I'm at a very nice level. Magneton, I outspeed and go for Earthquake. Gardevoir, I don't outspeed, but it goes for Future Sight, which is a terrible move. And then finally, Rosilia, we outspeed and go for Flamethrower. Okay, that wasn't difficult. But the Elite Four probably will be difficult. And even if we beat some of the members quickly... I have a very sneaking suspicion we're going to have to be at or near level 100 if we want to defeat Wallace. All right, so the first Elite Four member is Sydney, a dark type trainer. He leads with Mighty Anna, and this is a problem because Mighty Anna has Intimidate. Now, we can go for Flamethrower, and it's a one shot, but the next Pokemon to come out is Crawdont, a water Pokemon. It uses Surf, and it one shots me. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue. I do have another White Herb, so that's what I was saving it for. Earthquake does one-shot Mighty Anna. Earthquake now one-shots... Oh, never mind. 
it does not one-shot Crawdon. So it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to battle. I have one rare candy, so I can use that, but we're probably gonna have to level up more. Okay, so now with the rare candy and the white herb, we've combined the two. Earthquake one-shots my Deanna, crit didn't matter. Next comes out Crawdon. Earthquake should one-shot, it does. That's two down. Shift Tree is next. It goes for Swagger. Interesting. We can't equip Personberry because we are already using the White Herb. Thankfully, we snap right out of Confusion and knock out Cacturn. And with that attack boost, we will easily one-shot Absol. It goes for Rock Slide, but don't forget, I'm Park Ground type. So, that was Sydney. Not too bad, but the next Elite Four member might be a little more trouble. Phoebe is a Ghost type trainer. And she likes to use a lot of PowerPoint stalling moves, so this might not go super, super well. Okay, so I'm gonna go for Earthquake and Dusclops goes for Protect. I think it always goes for Protect, and Earthquake doesn't knock it out, which is a problem because now I'm confused and Phoebe goes for a full restore. I go for Flamethrower and I get the burn. It still doesn't knock out Dusclops, and I go for Amnesia. Unfortunately, I hit myself in confusion. I thought that'd be a smart move to do. Burn knocks out Dusclops. Next, Dusclops comes out. I go for Flamethrower. It does half. It knows Earthquake. It doesn't do all that much damage to me. But after Citrus Berry, it has a lot of its health back. I go for my Earthquake. And we actually knock it out, which is really good. Next comes out Binet. I only have two Earthquakes left. So I go for Flamethrower, which doesn't knock it out. It goes for Shadow Ball. I only have 30 HP left, and there's still Sableye. Earthquake knocks it out, that's not bad. And another Binet. I'm gonna use my last Earthquake, and even though it looks like it levitates, it doesn't. So that was close, but once again, we get the victory. Here is where I think things will be a little trickier. Glacia is an Ice-type Elite Four member. However, she has a Wall Rain, which is Water-type, with Thick Fat, so... It's almost like another water type trainer. This is probably gonna go really badly. She leads with Celio. I go for rollout. It does just under half. And Celio always goes for hail turn one. Unfortunately, I miss with rollout. And then I just reset. I have saved in front of Glacia, which is actually gonna be a problem because that means I don't get back my white herb. So that was an oversight by me. Anyway, we use rollout. It goes for hail. Hopefully we don't miss. Oh, we miss again. All right, not a big deal. We just have to try for a third time. Always annoying when this happens, but what can you do? All right, rollout. Okay, turn one miss. Goodness gracious. 90% move, not missing. Can we do this? This is the hardest challenge I've ever had. Okay, another attempt. Rollout hits. There's hail, proving it always goes for hail turn one. And yay! Second turn, we knock it out. Next comes out Wall Rain. This is going to be a third... Oh, it outspeeds. Okay. Well, that was... Okay, that's all I need to see. Now, unfortunately, I can't just reload and get the White Herb back because I messed up and saved in front of Glacia. So I just have to level up. We have to outspeed Wall Rain. We're not going to win otherwise. Okay, so I leveled up and got a bunch of rare candies and I'm now level 90. So, double Mighty Anna's level. Earthquake is going to one-shot, which is pretty good. Earthquake is going to one-shot Crawdon. So, even with Intimidate, we're fine. We outspeed and one-shot Shiftry. Next comes out Cacturn. We outspeed and one-shot. All right. I mean, we're level 90. This is a, a little bit unfair. But, to be perfectly honest, I don't really care. I mean, this is going to be hard enough. And Wallace might still be a loss. I'm going to save in front of Phoebe. I'm hoping I can win at level 90. But I don't have the highest of hopes. Okay, so we should one-shot Dusclops. It goes for Protect. I should have gone for Amnesia. The next Earthquake will knock it out in one hit. That's really good. Now the second Dusclops doesn't know Protect. And Earthquake knocks it out as well. Very good. We can then knock out Binette in one hit. You know what? We're just going to knock out everything in one hit. We already were knocking out everything in one hit. All right. So now we make it all the way back to Glacia. It looks like the first two members of the Elite Four are a complete joke now, which makes sense. We're level 90 and Nummel isn't an absolutely terrible Pokemon, but 
do we outspeed Walrein? And do we have enough to beat Wallace? That I'm not so sure about. Okay, so we go for rollout. Now it uses hail. We're actually outspeeding, which is really good. Now we knock out Celio. Walrein, hail falls, third turn rollout, enough to knock it out. So this is an easy victory. Now all that's left are Glalie, which are weak to fire moves and rollout. We have a fifth turn coming out against the second Celio. We knock it out. And that means all Glacia has left is a second Glalie. We can just go for Flamethrower. And it looks like if we don't get a miss against the Walrein, Glacia is easy as well. There's only one more Elite Four member to go, and that's Drake, the Dragon type Elite Four member. Flygon could be scary. Salamence might be pretty difficult as well. So I don't think this battle is going to be nearly as easy as others, but I hope it will be easy enough that if we need to gain a bunch of experience points, we can just win these battles a bunch and get to level 100. All right, Shelgon likes to go for Protect, which it does. Earthquake obviously doesn't hit. The next one does and one-shots. But here comes Flygon. We don't have anything good. It actually outspeeds and goes for Earthquake, and we do half with Flamethrower. That's not good. That's not good. That's exactly what I was worried about. So, what do we do here? Because... We don't really have a good move for Flygon. Flamethrower, resisted. Rollout, resisted. Amnesia, useless. Earthquake, immune. I need to think about this. Okay, so I have the TM for secret power, which is a base 70 power normal move. But, as you're about to see, it doesn't make too much of a difference. We knock out Shelgon, and it does just as much as Flamethrower. I was going to reteach Flamethrower, but yeah, that's not going to work either. There is one thing I can do to beat at least the Flygon, but after that, I'm not so sure. So, against Shelgon, we just knock it out. I actually meant to use an Elixir, but I probably won't win against Wallace, so it's not a big deal. Now, yes, it looks like nothing has changed, but since we do over half, I use Quick Claw, and it's a 20% chance to make it past Flygon. But now, out comes Kingdra. We actually probably got Quick Claw there, but whatever, I don't know. And now Altaria, we go for rollout. It goes for Dragon Dance. And instead of attacking, it goes for another Dragon Dance. We actually might win. Because as long as Salamence doesn't knock us out, which I don't think it can, it goes for Dragon Claw, even with the Intimidate. Third turn rollout. We made it past Drake. Now that's not a consistent battle. But at the very least, we've made it to Wallace for the first time. And now we can at least find out what exactly we're up against. I don't think this is going to be such a quick victory. But I have been surprised before. We beat Drake faster than I thought. Let's see. Okay. So Wallace leads with Waylord. And it knows Water Spout. We need to outspeed or it's going to knock us out. We do. But, oh, we do knock it out. I thought we weren't going to. Don't know why. Next comes out Tentacruel and it misses with Hydro Pump. That would have one shot, so that's good. But now comes out Ludicolo. I go for Flamethrower. It goes for Surf. Not quite a one shot. That's really good. But 15 HP is pretty bad. Whiskash, I go for Earthquake. And it doesn't knock it out. Okay, a couple observations is one. We either need to outspeed Tentacruel or it's just a 20% chance of making it to the next part. And B, we probably need to level up so we one shot Whiskash. It's this is gonna be tough. I just really don't see another way this is gonna work. I mean, we're gonna one shot Waylord, it looks like every single time. I don't think that crit matters. And then we just need the miss because under no circumstances are we gonna survive a hydro pump. So I can just keep trying this again and again and again and again, but I just don't think there's much of a point. We could also go for quick loss strats. That gives us, an, well, not an additional 20%. I don't know the exact math, but it gives us an additional chance to make it to Ludicolo. So we're going to see if we can make it farther, learn more. We knock out Waylord once again. That's not surprising. Now it does miss. Okay, so we got that 20% miss chance. Pretty good. Now against Ludicolo, I go for Flamethrower, try for the crit. It goes for double team. Interesting. Okay, since it went for double team... I can go for Earthquake and, whoa, it's a range. And my low tick outspeeds and goes for, oh no. 
in terms of luck, it couldn't have been much better. We one-shot the Whiskash, got the Hydra Pump miss, and Ludicolo didn't attack. None of that matters because my Lodric outspeeds in one shot. This is why I didn't know if this would be possible. If we can't outspeed my Lodric... Well, there's Quick Claw, but if we have no consistent way of knocking it out, I don't know. This is going to be really tough. I do have another idea, though. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to go for Earthquake against Waylord. That we always have to do. But then against Tenacruel, I can set up Sunny Day, but now I need two Hydro Pump misses. I don't get the second one, but... Assuming I did, which is very unlikely, now Flamethrower will probably one-shot Ludicolo, which it does. Then we need the high roll against Whiskash, which we get. And now does my low tick still knock us out? Probably. But you can see where I'm going here. Assuming Tenacruel and Ludicolo don't hit us, we might be able to survive Surf by my low tick and hopefully deal enough damage. If only we had Solar Beam, that would be way better. Unfortunately, here's where this run took a very annoying turn. Tenacruel kept hitting with Hydro Pump. I think it hit 25 consecutive times. Anyone who was at that stream, you could just see me going insane, thinking that like I messed up, the game was broken. It just didn't make any sense why it kept getting so many Hydro Pump hits. And that was just to get one Hydro Pump miss. It didn't even matter because even if I had a little more HP, my Logic still knocks me out. After 40 minutes of trying, and yes, I played increased speeds, I left the Elite Four and decided to redo my stats. Now, in Emerald version only, people will ask in my Ruby and Sapphire runs why I don't do this. It's because while these berries exist, the ones that lower your EVs, they don't do that until Emerald. So what are EVs? Invisible stat points that make some stats better than others. You get a max of 510, and you can put a maximum of 255 in each stat, although really you should only put 252. It doesn't matter. The point is, we can organize these better to make Nummel better for the Elite Four. Now, you can also buy vitamins to help out, and by redoing my stats, I try to make Nummel both faster and hit harder while taking away stats in its HP and defense. Now, when you're playing the game, you don't really have much control over what EVs you get unless you're really, really trying to train your Pokemon. By just defeating random Pokemon by trainers, gym leaders, you're going to gain random EVs. So while this might make Numble a little worse in some situations, I do think this is a bit more optimal and might lead to a better battle. The first three battles were extremely easy, so I'm just going to skip ahead to Drake and see if these new stats make a difference. Remember, Drake was extremely difficult. So I go for Sunny Day. Unfortunately, Rock Doom is the worst thing we could get. It goes for Protect, but now Flamethrower should one-shot Shellgon, and there's a chance it could one-shot Flygon. Flygon goes for Earthquake. It deals way more damage because my defense is lower, and that causes Drake to use a full restore, but it... Oh! Burn is good. Oh, Burn knocks it out. Okay, now out comes Kingdra, and Surf does knock me out. So, this could be a bit of an issue. This is the downside of what I just did. While it might give us an easier battle versus Wallace, it might have actually hurt us versus Drake. So, that could be a problem, and when we consider that Drake already was inconsistent, it's possible I could have made things harder on myself, which is why I'm not resetting and just keeping the experience points I can't afford to reset. I might have to go all the way to level 100. So I'm at a slightly higher level. I battle again. I hope for protect. I don't get it. I get rock to him. So you know what I'm going to do? Just reset. I don't want to take that speed drop. Maybe I outspeed Flygon. So yeah, let's just keep going. All right. This time we get protect. That's good. We know flamethrower knocks out Shellgon. So that's good. Now, do we outspeed Flygon? Sun is strong? Oh, we do. We don't one-shot, but now that we outspeed, we don't have to rely on Quick Claw. Full Restore now doesn't matter a ton. However, it does decrease the number of Sun turns we have left. I think we only have two left. It, actually, none. Kingdra just came out. Okay, I can't count. But we knock it out with Earthquake, and we outsped. Now I go for Rollout against Altaria. It goes for Dragon Dance. And then it goes for a second Dragon Dance, just like last time. And just like last time, 
I don't think Salamence can knock me out. Even with Intimidate, yeah, Dragon Claw, not strong enough. Crit may have mattered, I don't know. But we have made it back to Wallace at level 94. We're actually almost level 95. I don't know if all these changes I made are going to help. I hope they help. They should help. But I'm not 100% sure. And the only way to find out is to just battle Wallace. Normally when I do these runs, I do them in multiple sessions. This is one of the first times I've attempted a run past Generation 1 in one sitting. It's been almost six hours, which actually isn't that bad, but it's still a very long time to be just doing one thing. Still, I think we have a real shot. Let's try it. All right, so we already know how the battle's gonna start. We're gonna use Earthquake and knock out Waylord, and that's gonna get us to level 95. Next comes out Tentacruel. We now outspeed and knock it out. That's huge. Ludicolo, I go for Flamethrower, and it goes for Surf, and it knocks me out. So that won't work. <laughs> that won't work. But I did have an idea. So my special attack isn't high enough to knock out Ludicolo with Flamethrower. But might it be high enough if I swapped a Fire Blast? I don't really need Flamethrower other than for Ludicolo, so I can delete it. And now let's see how the battle goes. Because if we can one-shot Ludicolo... And we're outspeeding Tentacruel. I mean, this is way more consistent already. So Earthquake one-shots Waylord. We're at level 95. We're outspeeding Tentacruel. So the speed investment definitely mattered because we weren't before. Ludicolo, we hit with Fire Blast and we don't one-shot. Oh, we survive on 10 HP. That's pretty cool. Now at least we can see how the rest of the battle is going to go. We one-shot Whiskash. Now out comes my low tick. I don't think I one shot. Wait, I do one shot. But now out comes Gyarados. And we're going to definitely need some HP for Gyarados. Like Flygon, we don't really have a good move to use against it. It's actually quite bad because we weren't even doing half. So this might be a really big problem. I'm going to make one change going into this next battle. I had the Soft Sand, which powered up my ground type moves. And I'm going to give it Charcoal. Hopefully, this will allow me to one-shot Ludicolo. And maybe do half to Gyarados. So, we go for Earthquake against... Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> for the first time ever, Waylord survived. But this actually is good. Water Spout deals damage based on its HP. So, it had like one HP. So, Water Spout dealt nothing. But wait, it gets even better. Now Wallace goes for full restore, so I can set up Sunny Day. I actually forgot to teach Fire Blast. I forgot I didn't save. So we have to actually use Flamethrower, but we're going to have Sunny Day. This is going to be interesting. We knock out Tentacruel in one hit. Now it comes Ludicolo with my increased special attack and the sun. Flamethrower does knock it out. Now out comes Whiskash. I don't know if I knock it out without Soft Sand. Oh, we do. Now my low tick. The sun has faded. I go for Earthquake. We knock it out. This is by far the best position we've been in headed to Gyarados, but in no way is this battle over yet. I go for Sunny Day. Surf. Ooh, it doesn't even do half. I go for Flamethrower. That does over half. It's burned. It goes for Earthquake. We just won. Wait, maybe not. Full Restore. Flamethrower does over half. No, we won. Sun's still out. We won! I can't believe it! That went so much better than I thought it would. Nummel, the speedy camel that knocks out water Pokemon with fire moves. Let's go. All right, so definitely a lot better than I thought it would be. Hope this run wasn't disappointing, but if it was, don't worry. We have some runs coming up with some truly awful Pokemon. And uh, it's going to be quite difficult to say the least. Maybe not even possible. Not sure. Going to go work on those videos. See you tomorrow. Take care.